When Officer Justin Thompson stepped out of his patrol car on an unusually cool summer evening in Jonesboro, Arkansas, to respond to a routine disorderly conduct call, he never could have imagined the catastrophe his day would end with. At the time of the call on the 18th of August in 2016, Officer Thompson was still a rookie, having only attended his swearing-in ceremony six months earlier. But when the Jonesboro Police Department received complaints from workers at the Turtle Creek Mall about a young man who seemed heavily intoxicated, he was one of the handful of officers who headed straight to the scene. As one of the employees, likely the mall security guard, reported to the officers when they arrived. He came in and I saw him. He was out there by Solaris, and he was acting real funny. I kind of watched him a little bit, and he came up to me and said, Give me a hug, man. I'm like, no, I can't hug you. So at least he gave me a fist bump. I was like, all right. And he kind of walked on down. He said, I'm going to Aeropostale. So I was like, I didn't smell any alcohol on him. And then they said he was in Aeropostale. They said that he told the people in there that he was drunk. And we found him in GNC, and that's when we stopped him. When the officers tracked down the young man in question, they found him wandering around the mall's northeast entrance, so they guided him over to where their police vehicles were parked at a nearby loading dock to ask him some questions. As the mall workers had described, the man did seem heavily intoxicated, slurring and cursing while belligerently refusing to answer initial questions. Members of law enforcement left it to Officer Thompson to conduct the interview because, although he was a rookie, he possessed such a friendly and personable demeanor that it was assumed he could get the surly suspect to open up. What's the thing, man? Don't? This goes on for a few minutes, with the young man slurring and cussing unintelligibly before eventually giving them his first name, Logan, in between assurances that he ain't hurt anybody. How much have you had to drink, man? I ain't hurt how much have you had to drink? Thank you. It actually is. It actually is my business. Logan, what's your last name, Logan? Logan, what's your last name, man? I don't know. You don't know? Do you know your birthday? I don't. You don't? I mean, uh, look, look. Like I said to the mall cop, cut me some slack. Would you just take me home? You ain't helping them at all. I'll cut you anything. Yeah, you're not cooperating. Hey, y'all trying to lock me out. You know, I'm stuck under this. I need to scream. I'm like, I'm dying. I don't care. I'm dying. Let's tell you about it. At this point, it sounds as though Logan is claiming his mom died. And though this is tragic, if true, neither his lawyer nor his family will mention this detail when speaking to the press later. It's unclear what exactly he's referring to here or if he just made it up. He continues wailing in this fashion for a few more minutes until an exasperated Officer Thompson promises to give Logan a ride, being careful not to specify where, in order to get the intoxicated young man to calm down and get into the patrol car. Logan, you tell me who you are. You tell me who you are, I promise I'll give you a ride, all right? All right, all right look, thank you, promise. This pinky promise would wind up being Officer Thompson's biggest mistake. After being put into the back of the patrol car, Logan once again becomes agitated. He directs bizarre accusations at Officer Thompson. I should play fair. I should shoot. Like your cheek. I'm not cheating, man. I got no heart. Whatever. Alone in the back of the car, Logan manages to get his cuffed hands in front of him and begins to eerily talk to himself. He attempts to open the car door. Always play fair. And then you end it back, sir, Tommy, just because I play fair. Yeah. So, all of you. So. Okay, how do you say your last name, man? I don't know. Holy crap. You're not playing fair. You're lying. Come you lied to me. me. You lied to me. You promised me you'd give me a ride home. I am you're still going to try to give me a ride to jail. You switched your sh** on me. That's up. I could have been a bad guy. I'm smart. You are? I am. Did you know 
Then my dad was a bat. Okay. You have to call out. I'm going to take you out the car. Which one you want to do? I'll get out of the car if you give me your hand off my arm. Okay, you have to call Thank you. Let go, man. Get out. No, I'm not. Now, listen. I just said I'd get out. The officers take a photo for dispatch and continue to fill out the voucher form for the contents of his pockets. Logan is then returned to the back of the patrol car where he immediately begins twisting around in an attempt to free himself from the cuffs once more. You lied to me. You lied to me. I thought you might have played fair, but you f***ing lied to me. You know what? You. Logan won't provide his name, and the officer is well within the scope of asking for Logan to ID himself. You're required to ID yourself if an officer believes you've committed a crime or are about to, and they have reasonable, articulable suspicion. If an officer believes you're intoxicated in public, like in this specific situation, they're investigating that crime and, therefore, you must identify yourself. In addition, the officer hasn't lied. He's just used his words carefully, stating he would give Logan a ride. As a result, he was able to get Logan into the police vehicle. Let me ask you something, man. What's up? Since you're such a good guy, you just play by the rules. What's up? Tell me. You know what's up? What's that? How this country is going. Right? What did y'all do? What happened? You broke your promise. I did. You didn't even want it. Things are about to take an extremely horrifying turn. At this point, Officer Thompson begins to panic as he's just realized that Logan has escaped his cuffs for the second time and now has both hands free. He speeds up the patrol car, trying to get away from the public, turning on his lights and sirens in an attempt to clear the way as he has no idea what Logan is about to do. Logan, meanwhile, lies on his back and pulls out a lighter in an attempt to light the back of the police car on fire. But suddenly, the officer begins to lose control of the vehicle. The police cruiser slides through two westbound lanes and bounces over a curb before a fence causes it to roll on its side and skids several yards through the lawn of a local business.
Officer Thompson was knocked unconscious as several cars screeched to a halt near the scene. Meanwhile, after bouncing through the rear window, Logan landed some dozen or so feet away in the grassy front lawn of the business. He was dazed and confused, but not down for the count, as several witnesses saw him staggering off in the gangly lope of a newborn giraffe in an attempt to escape around the side of the building. A small number of onlookers chased after him, managing to corner him in an alcove set into the building where he screamed obscenities at them. If he'd been irritable before, he was now officially cranky, requiring officers to tase him at least once in order to get him back into the new patrol car that showed up to collect him. Meanwhile, Officer Thompson had to be cut from the car and airlifted to a Memphis trauma hospital, though he was later released, having only suffered a concussion. Logan, who emerged from the wreck remarkably unscathed, was charged with escape, fleeing on foot, public intoxication, and minor in possession, though it's unclear whether he served any time for these charges. His lawyer, Robert Wells, showed up to court with a bit of a bombshell. He explained that his client, 19-year-old Logan Younger, had been diagnosed with autism, schizophrenia, and bipolar disorder, and therefore shouldn't be held accountable for his actions, going so far as to claim that the officer breaking his pinky promise caused the unpredictable behavior seen in Logan. Wells also leveled accusations at the JPD, saying that their policies needed to be reviewed and the officer driving the car should be under investigation, as he believed Officer Thompson was driving too fast and shouldn't have had his lights and sirens on. While it appears the family may have tried to bring Officer Thompson to court, the suit seems to have been dismissed in 2019. After this little trip through the back window of the police cruiser and subsequent charges, Logan's life took a bit of an odd turn. The clip of him escaping his handcuffs and bouncing through the rear window appeared online later that year and went extremely viral, prompting Logan to try to start a small online career on YouTube and TikTok. At first, he was something of an anti-hero, the so-called handcuff Houdini. But even as he began to make more content, his popularity never grew, as it was clear his life and mental health were spiraling. He appeared in multiple TikTok videos with injuries, sporting black eyes and a disheveled appearance, and it was clear he was still getting into trouble with the police for his drinking. So today, shapes on my superhuman abilities or whatever. Whether or not his videos on his superpowers are signs of delusional thinking or merely an act is unknown. Strangely enough, Logan wasn't the only one to encounter another setback after the crash. As in 2017, just one year later, Officer Thompson would be fired from his position with the JPD for allegedly using the police-issued gas card for his private vehicles. However, it's unclear if he was charged or cleared of allegations. Currently, he is a real estate agent.